hey, take your, take your Bibles or your phones, whatever you use, you know, to uh, have God's Word. But turn with me to Matthew 25, the parable of diligence. Where is that? What parable is that? Never heard of that parable of all the, the parables that are there. Well, I'm, I'm taking responsibility. I, I've kind of renamed it the parable of diligence, but it's Matthew chapter 25. Uh, we're going to be reading verses 14 through 30. Maybe you know it more as the parable of the talents or the parable of the loaned money or the parable of the faithful. Uh, it's been some of the names that are maybe at the, the top of that passage in your Bible. But uh, uh, today and maybe here on, uh, I'm going to refer to it as the parable of diligence. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we read this passage of Scripture and uh, it'll be on the screen. So uh, you know what? I know, I know there's about uh, 15 verses there, 16 verses that uh, we're going to be reading. But let, let's read them together. If we have the same uh, paraphrase up on the screen, we have it, right? Is it going to be there? All right, Matt. Let's, let's read it together, all right? So that, and when, as we read it, I want you to listen for what I'm going to call key words. All right? Again, you've, you've all heard this parable before. You know, uh, the, the three servants and, uh, you know, the two of the servants uh, uh, went and, and made their master uh, uh, more money or, uh, you know, more talents. Uh, we, we've all heard it so many times before. But as we read it and as you hear yourself reading it, I want you to, I want it to register in your mind some key words. And then we're going to be highlighting probably those key words uh, that, uh, that uh, you you, 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 uh, you sense as we read it. So let's read it together, right? Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. But the, no, <laughs> after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here it is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, it is precious to us. Lord, we know, Lord, that your word will lead us and guide us and, and show us the direction uh, that we should go in this life that you've given to us. Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, uh, we would not just hear your word and forget it, but Lord, that we would hear your word. Lord, and we would apply it to our lives. And Lord, that we would know, Lord, that your word will be that strong foundation for our life. Lord, I pray, help us to be diligent. 
with everything that you've given to us. And Lord, that we will be diligent with the life that you've given to us. I pray now, Lord, let your word minister to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. That's a, it's, it, 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 this is an awesome parable. I mean, all, all of the Lord's parables uh, are, are just uh, so, they're practical, they're spiritual. Uh, I mean, if you, just, uh, if you just did a study of Jesus' parables, uh, you would grow in just uh, so many ways. And this parable, you know, again, it's been, it's been, it's a very familiar parable. I think, you know, you, uh, you could, uh, uh, I could ask each one of you without your Bible open, you know, hey, tell me the parable of the, uh, the talents. And, uh, you know, you'd be able to uh, pretty much summarize the, the, the whole thing there. It's, a, it's easy to remember. That was the, the, that was so, what was so great about Jesus' parables. They're, they're easy to remember. They're easy to remember. And I, as, I, as, I, I, as I highlight this, very, this, this parable, and, and as, we, as we proceed from where we've been the last three weeks and uh, uh, talking about excellence, and now we're going to be, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be highlighting the, uh, that idea of diligence. Highlighting that, uh, that idea. Of, and that's why I, I really think we, we've misnamed this parable. You know, when, when we refer to it as the parable of the talents or the parable of the loan money, that, that's a misnomer because it's not about the talents. It's not about the loan money. Uh, this, uh, the, this is the NIV uh, paraphrase, and it refers to the, it as uh, uh, bags of gold. It, it's not about, well, you know, because some people say, well, which is it, talents or bag of gold or, you know, money? What, what? It's not about that. It's not about that. What Jesus is, is teaching here is he's talking about uh, the, the servants and their attitude and, and uh, the way they were going to go about living. The, uh, the, the master was going to be gone. And he, he was giving his, his, uh, his possessions, he was giving charge of his possessions to these servants. And, and, and so they were, to, they were to work, they were to serve him. And, and uh, so the story is encouraging diligence. You know the uh, you know uh, of 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 the servants that they were to be diligent with the the master's possessions while he was gone, and, and so uh, and, and I want to share this idea of diligence with you as a characteristic for rising up to the next level. You know, as we've been talking since the beginning of the year, and it's been our our, our focus and our and our goal is to uh, you know, no matter where we were this past year or where we've been in our lifetime. Uh, that we're making a determination that we're going to go to the next level. We're going uh, we're gonna to do something more. We're going to grow. And we need to understand diligence is going to help you to do that. If you take what God has done in your life and, and everything that he's given you, and if you just say, well, that's it, I'm going to just, I'm going to hide that. I'm going to put it under the mattress. That's, uh, that, that's it. That, uh, you know, uh, you're going to be content with that then you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to go to another level. But as we determine to be diligent with what God has given to us, that he's going to take us to another level. He's going to help us to rise up and to rise above uh, this world. Well, what does this word diligence mean? Well, diligence means to move quickly and to do your best. Basically, you know, if you if you if you look it up, and even even the, uh, the Hebrew and the Greek words, we'll be we'll be looking at some Old Testament uh, verses that are the Hebrew, and of course, uh, uh, w w with this parable, it's in the in, in the Greek. But uh, uh, it means to move quickly and to do your best. For instance, what do we see from these servants who were diligent? When, when we look at that passage, all right, and reading, and let me read verses sixteen through 18 again, and some of these key words that I was hoping that maybe you would hear. It says, the man who received five bags of gold went at once, all right? He moved quickly. He was diligent immediately. He set about, and he put that money to work, it says, and he gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. So again, these two, they moved at once. They moved quickly and they did their best to work and to gain more possessions for their master. It says the man who had received one bag went off. Went off 
dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And so we see here the difference uh, of, dil of diligence, all right? And it's that, you know, it, it's, it's moving quickly and doing your best. You know, another way we understand, it, we understand this is, is diligence uh, is about effort. It, so sometimes it's just about putting forth effort. That's why sometimes when we talk about this parable, and we say the parable of talents, and it, some, there's an implication there uh, that uh, uh, there's, there's talents. Some people have it, some people don't. But the one thing that we all have is effort. Either the lack of effort or giving effort. We all, that, that, that's something we're all capable. It has nothing to do with your wealth. It has nothing to do with your talent. It has nothing to do uh, with, with your heritage. It, it has to do with you personally. And, and, and if you're willing to go at once and to give your best and to give that best effort. And so uh, it's, it's, it's about, you know, it's not about, uh, it's not, again, about uh, uh, do you have the skills or, or, or not, but it's, it's, a, it's about the quality of your work, giving your best, giving your best, to be, and to remain steadfast and to stay committed to that which is your passion. See, that's what you, you can tell what is a passion. These two, ser the first two servants, they had a passion. Their passion was the, uh, was the well-being of their master. And, and so they, uh, they, they were passionate about that, and they, gave, uh, they were committed to it. And, and uh, the, the other servant, there was, there was no passion. The, there, were, there was no uh, sense of, of uh, desire to do anything. And we're going to get a little bit more into this as we go. But, uh, but it's that idea of a willingness, a desire to work and to not stop working regardless of the cost, regardless of the discomfort. Do, you, do we understand anything in life? I mean, you got to work for. you got to work for. But see, that's, that's why the lottery is so popular. Everybody has that dream that I won't have to work ever again. I won't have to work ever again. You know, and, 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 and again, that, 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 that's such a, a falsehood, uh, su such an untruth. But the idea is that, uh, again, to be diligent. That's what we've been created uh, to, to be, is to be diligent servants for the Lord. So as a servant for the Lord, we have a twofold pursuit now, all right? Uh, we've been talking about excellence, and that's, a, that's the attitude, all right? Excellence is the attitude, that, that we're going to pursue excellence. We've been talking about that for, I've had three messages now uh, about just uh, uh, trying to cultivate that idea of whatever you do, do it all, you know, for the Lord. Do ex excellence is giving your all. You know, and that, that's an attitude, all right? Uh, uh, and, and so now we're, uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, that's, the, that's the left hook, and the right hook is going to be diligence. And that's what I'm referring to is the action. And they go hand in hand. You know, and, and that's, how you, can, that's how, how you can be victorious in this life is pursuit of excellence, the attitude of excellence, and then putting that attitude into action with diligence. All right, and so we're, we're tying this all together, and, and today we're, we're, we're talking about this parable. What can we learn from this parable? All right, well, from this parable, we, we can see that diligence recognizes three things, all right? Diligence recognizes a personal sense of ownership. You say, what do you mean ownership? Well, we need to understand this idea of ownership this pair, you know, these servants, the, two, the first two servants, they had a sense of ownership. That the master had given of his own possessions uh, to them. And, and so they took, it as, uh, they took it as a personal responsibility. That, that uh, they, they looked at themselves as uh, that, that ownership. All right? You think of a, 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 an owner, there's an owner of a restaurant, and, and the owner of the restaurant has a general manager. And, and, and that general manager needs to uh, just recognize that uh, there, there's a sense of ownership. The owner has uh, entrusted. There's, a, there's one of the, the key words that I hope you saw as we read that parable. I hope you heard that. Three times, three times that word entrusted 
is used. And, and so, uh, again, these, these two servants, they, uh, they recognized that sense of ownership, that personal responsibility, and that, that they said that they, they realized they needed to do everything they could with what the master had given them. They, they took ownership, just like it was their own. Just like it was their own. And, and we need to understand uh, that a, a person who has a sense of ownership, there, there's, a, there's a twofold understanding when you consider yourself an owner. All right, there, there's twofold understanding. You say, I, I, I own this. I, I, I own this business. I, uh, I own this ministry. I, 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 I own this, uh, this possession. You have, you, have, you, have, uh, you have two understandings that you need to uh, come to grips with. And that, fir- first of all, is that it, the, the, there's the personal benefit in success. There's, there's a personal benefit. When you own something, when, when you consider it yours, there's a benefit there. It, it, it's yours. It's yours to do with whatever you will. And, and, and that, that, that as an owner, you want to you do your best. You want to be, uh, be diligent to, uh, to know, knowing that you're going to enjoy the benefits that compound and continue because you're the owner. You're the owner. Now, the, 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 the second understanding you need, to understand, you need to understand is this, is that there is also then the personal blame in failure. That there's a, there's a personal responsibility, uh, and, and that's, that needs to be a, that, that's a, that should be a, a tremendous motivation. That, that uh, hey, I, I, I don't want to lose this. I, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, lose this benefit, uh, uh, you know, and if, 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 I, if I do, then... I can't blame anybody else. I can't blame anybody. Now we're gonna we're gonna see more about that blame idea uh, in, in a few minutes. But just that understanding that 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 as we look at this parable, the Lord is telling us, Christ is telling us uh, that He is entrusting to us His possessions, His uh, His His promises, His gifts, and, and that word entrusted. Uh, the Greek word for that word entrusted. It also implies, again, you say, okay, a trust. You know, you, you, you've been given that responsibility. But from, from the master, that Greek word means he surrendered. He has surrendered his possessions to his servants. And I mean, it means he's given it up. And, and, and in a way, he, 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 he you know, we're, we're, again, a master that, Maybe he doesn't want to take a chance. He'll, 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 he'll keep it. He'll hoard it. But, but the, uh, this master was surrendering his possessions to his servants, knowing, knowing that if they work diligently, they would bless him. But knowing that if they failed, that he would lose. He could lose it. He could lose what he had entrusted, what he had surrendered to them. And so we need to understand. Let's look, let's look at this from the standpoint of Christ. What are, what are the talents, what are the bags of gold that Christ has surrendered, entrusted into our care? All right, we think about the, the things we, uh, that, that we have through Christ, all right? Uh, uh, love, we have uh, joy, we have peace, all right? We have uh, we, we, we have uh, assurances, we have his word, we have his spirit. He's given us so much. But the, the first thing that Jesus has surrendered to us, when he gave up his life and he, he entrusted to us, he, he's given us his father's gift of salvation. All right, he, 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 and, and, and we, we, we can own that. We, uh, we, 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 we can uh, know uh, that we are born again, we are forgiven, and, and that's, that, that's, that's for you, that's for me. It's an individual, it's a personal thing. Now, now then, okay, if we, if we say instead of, instead of talents or bags of gold, if we say uh, that Christ the Master has given uh, to each one his salvation, what do you do with that salvation? And again, to be diligent and to take ownership of it uh, says that we're going to go at once and we are going uh, to put that salvation to work. Or we could be that third servant and we just go off 
and we hide that salvation and don't use it to bless anybody or to do anything with. Can you see that picture? I mean, can you understand uh, this idea uh, of, uh, of that uh, Christ is our master? And as his servants, he's given us salvation. That first and foremost, that, you know, everything. And I understand this. You receive the salvation, and then you put it to work. You don't work first and receive the salvation. The, the salvation, the master has given us that salvation as a gift. He has surrendered it to us. We haven't earned it. We haven't worked for it. You know, you don't work for your salvation. You don't do good things to receive salvation. But when you receive that salvation, when that salvation is entrusted to us, then we're to go at once and put it to work. We're to go at once. And that's to be diligent with our salvation. So I hope you're finding that, uh, you know, and seeing, understand that as, uh, you know, we don't hide what God has given to us. But we, uh, we, we, we put it to work. We put it to work. And so there's that idea as, a, as an owner, a, as one who uh, possesses uh, the master's, uh, you know, uh, uh, wealth that he has given to us, that we have to be self-motivated. We have to initiate our effort and our work for the Lord. Paul, we have in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 15 through 16. I want you to see these two verses, this strong exhortation of the Apostle Paul to young Timothy to be diligent. What does it say there? Be diligent in these matters. Be diligent in these matters, Paul says. Give yourself wholly to them. I mean, he's, he's saying, you know, give, give your all. Be diligent so that everyone may see your progress. You know, see what God is doing in your life, that work. He says, watch your life and doctrine. Persevere in them. Be diligent. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So do you see, this is salvation at work. That when, when, when we take the salvation that the Lord, the Master has given to us, and we put it to work, and we're diligent, and we uh, uh, persevere, and we give ourselves wholly to what God has given to us, that it's going to be a personal benefit to us, but also to others. And so we see, and again, we need to grasp hold of that, church. We need to understand, that's what this parable is saying, is to be diligent. Be diligent. Well, diligence also recognizes a personal sense of what I call obligation. Right? The personal sense of ownership, personal sense of obligation. What's obligation? Obligation, I think you can say it's a calling. It's a duty. You know, what are some other words? You know, we need to understand that uh, there's an obligation, there's a loyalty there. <coughs> that, that, that we're loyal to someone, we're loyal to a cause. Uh, we're, we're loyal to Christ and his kingdom. Again, you, you know, the, you, you can apply this to uh, your career. You can apply, apply this uh, every day when you go to work, uh, that, that uh, there's, a, there's a sense of obligation there and that you're diligent in everything that you do and that it's going to show forth glory uh, to the Lord. But it's that, it's that duty, it's that, that calling, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's an honor. That, that we, we, we can have. These servants, we need, they, need, they, they understood, the two uh, in particular understood that, that uh, uh, the, the, the master had called them to a duty and they considered it an honor and, and they, they wanted to be loyal to, to, to the master. You know, we understand, I think this obligate, when we understand this obligation, it takes ownership even to a deeper level. I want hear me out here when I say that you know there's ownership, and then when we understand the obligation. See, sometimes as 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 an owner, you can just be all about yourself. You know, say, hey, this is gonna be this is gonna be for you know I'm I'm the owner. I'm gonna work hard. Uh, you know, I'm the owner. I have that sense of ownership. Uh, I'm gonna work hard because it's, it's gonna be a benefit to me. It's gonna be a benefit to me. But when we understand there's a sense of obligation, when we own something, uh, there's not just a sense of obligation to ourselves, uh, but that uh, that we can be a blessing to others. That that 
uh, you know, everything that we've, uh, you know, gained, the personal benefits uh, as, as an owner to something, uh, that uh, we can have a deeper awareness that we can meet some needs out there. We, uh, we, can, uh, we, we can touch some people. It's not near merely well, how, how this is going to benefit me, but what can I do for others? What can I do for others? And, and so, uh, uh, you know, that we, as, as we understand this idea uh, uh, that to be diligent, why? Why should I be diligent? Because we have an obligation to our fellow man. We have an o- obligation to, uh, to those that we know and those who even are strangers to us to our fellow man, and to be aware of the great need. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4, what does it say about uh, the diligent? It says, the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. And so when we understand this sense of obligation, our desires are not just for ourselves, but our desires become that uh, of, of the needs of others. And especially when, uh, you know, you, you hear about it, we, 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 we see uh, about it, we see the headlines, you know, and uh, individuals who uh, give to their fellow man, you know, and uh, we, you know, we see how, uh, the, you know, people are honored for uh, their, you know, uh, their, uh, their giving to others and to giving to the community and, and things like that. But how much more as servants of Christ, you know, it's not about, oh, I'm just concerned about my salvation and that I'm going to get to heaven and that's all I'm worried about. No, it's understanding that our desire as a diligent servant is going to be fully satisfied, but we need to be, our desires need to be for others. Our desires need to be for others. And so we, 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 we understand, okay, we recognize that personal ownership and, and now as we see that obligation that as an owner, we're obligated, not just for ourselves and our personal benefit, but obligated for the needs of others. And that we shouldn't hide what God has given to us and keep it to ourselves, but we extend it and show it to others and, and that uh, we can, knowing that our desires as diligent servants of Christ will be fully satisfied. And lastly, lastly, the diligence helps us to recognize a personal sense of opportunity. Opportunity. You always hear that, opportunity's knocking. Sometimes people say, if, if I just had the opportunity, I could do so much good. You know, and it's always that idea of, oh boy, if, 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 if I could just have this, if I could win the lottery, the opportunities I would have. And we miss those opportunities because we have that mentality. You know, a sense of opportunity comes with a sense of a strong work ethic. You know, uh, you know, it, it, diligence, to work diligently, that's, that's what creates opportunity. Thomas Edison said, opportunity is missed by most because it comes dressed in overalls and looks like work. So many people, you know, you say, oh, I got an opportunity for you. Oh, I'm there. Pastor, I'm there. I'm there. What? It's going to take work? It's going to take time? I'm going to have to come early to something? And you miss the opportunities. Because opportunity comes with a strong work ethic. You know, and we need to understand uh, that, that uh, uh, the master was giving those servants an opportunity. But it was going to take some work. It was going to take some work. And he, he was going to give them the opportunity to, uh, you know, enjoy his happiness. That's what the first two servants, when you see what happened to them, you know, that uh, they, they said, Master, you entrusted me with uh, these bags of gold, and I, I, I gained uh, just that many back for you. And, and the Master's reply was, well done, uh, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will uh, put you in charge of many things. Come and share your Master's happiness. But he, he was giving them an opportunity, an opportunity uh, for 
uh, happiness and opportunity, opportunity to experience uh, you know, more of his possessions, to be entrusted with more. But it was going to take some work. It was going to take some effort. It, 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 was, it, came, it came at a cost. And, and, and we need to understand Christ, Christ is ready to give us so much. But we need to understand it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity uh, that uh, for many is missed. For many it's missed. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 18 says this, It is appropriate, it is good for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given them. It's, a, it's the idea, it's an opportunity. This life is an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity. And we need to look at sometimes at the end of each day, we need to, we need to be honest with ourselves and we, we, we need to evaluate ourselves and say, was today a missed opportunity? Or, or can we say at the end of this day, Lord, uh, you, you gave me this day and, and, and uh, this is what I tried to do. And ask him just to bless those efforts that, 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 that we were diligent. We were diligent with what the Lord gave us to do. Over the next couple messages, we're going to just talk about this idea of diligence. It, it, it's something that uh, nobody can do it for you. It's something that you have to pledge yourself to. I'm kind of a little bit proud of my creativity in my next sermon. Because the sermon title is, I Pledge a Diligence. I like that. I like that. So you have to be here next week to find out what does that mean, I pledge a diligence. <laughs> Anyway, I want you to go from here. I want you to take this parable, and again, it's, you've heard it so many times, so many messages on this parable, but I, I, I just want you to take this parable and just say, oh, Lord, I understand now you're, uh, you, know, you're, uh, you're, you own everything. You own everything belongs to you. My life belongs to you. But that you've given, uh, you've given me uh, such blessings, and especially salvation, and, and, and how am I putting my salvation to work? How am I putting my salvation to work? You know, and, and to begin to pursue diligence. Uh, you know, I, again, I don't want to point, you know, people out and stuff like that, but we, we, we have some very diligent servants around here. Some very diligent servants around here. People that uh, come, they're behind the scenes. They, you know, diligence a lot of times isn't out there in the open for people to see. But there, there, there's, I mean, there we some very diligent servants. But all, 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 all you, you can do is to look at yourself and say, you know, to get to that next level, to say, you know what, I'm, I, I don't want to stay at this level. I, I think the, the Lord uh, has something more for me, and I want to rise to that next level. Well, it's going to take some diligence. And nobody can make you be diligent. It's something that you can only do on your own. You know, and I, I like what Kevin was sharing about uh, uh, there. You know, uh, I think it was, you know, I, ho I hope you understand that uh, sometimes as I have the council members, uh, you know, lead us to the tithes and offering that just as uh, when, when the Lord speaks out in our worship time and we hear a word from the Lord, that I believe these men, uh, as they pray, that the Lord gives them a word that's for us then. It's not just to take the tithes and offerings, but as he shared that word, you know, about sometimes, you know, the Lord may change your direction. There may be an obstacle there. You know, or, may, or, or maybe you're being encouraged. I believe today, uh, there's individuals here today, they're being encouraged to uh, seek a, 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 a new direction. That the Lord wants to take you to another level in service, you know. And, and again, there's opportunities there. There's opportunities there. You know, it's up to you if you're going to, there are going to be missed opportunities, there are going to be opportunities that are going to take you to the next level. I came across this quote, and I close with this. God can certainly move your mountains. You know, Scripture says that the Lord uh, will, will move, uh, move those mountains. God can certainly move your mountains, but don't be surprised if he hands you, uh, oh, you guys are on top of it, man. You heard that quote too. <laughs> and how, 
How's it when, when somebody gives you a shovel, you're like, oh, man. Or if somebody, you know, the pastor uh, gives you an opportunity, oh, man. But that's what God does sometimes. God gives us the tools for work, for work. But it'll be a blessing. It'll be a blessing to you personally. It'll be a blessing to others. Ministry, service, life, it's hard work. It's hard work. Sometimes it can be painful. It can be physically painful. It can be emotionally painful. But you cannot go and just hide what God has given you. Won't hide it. That's what the enemy wants us to do. But diligence is about keeping on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. These next couple weeks, I hope that you'll be here and you'll, you know, you'll pursue diligence with me. You're, you know, the, this, the, this message is just as much for me as for everybody else. Spurring me, spurring our church on to the work of Christ, to be diligent.